Thanks, Charles. I'm sorry to um, discover that, unfortunately, the uh, Minister, uh, Robbie Moore, who was intending to, to speak, is uh, in the farming debate, so, so he's not actually going to be able to, uh, to speak. He just asked me to, to just um, say, uh, give a very brief message um, that, unfortunately, he, he was unable to attend because he was in the, uh, uh, in the farming debate, but uh, on reflection, he, he believes that the government's record is uh, abject, so if anyone really feels strongly about this, they should vote Labour at next election. So, uh, <laughs> thanks to Robbie for that note. Uh, he didn't actually say that. Uh, but returning to what I was actually meant to say, um, uh, firstly, I, I wanted to, to say a huge thanks to uh, Surface Against Sewage for putting this event on, for the manifesto, and also for the work that you've been doing since the 1990s on, on what is uh, an incredibly uh, important and salient issue. Um, I, I, the, I know the manifesto is the, the culmination of a huge amount of work by yourself, by your team, Charles, uh, and, uh, and thanks to all of you for, for that work that you've done. I'd also like to pay a huge tribute to you, Joe, for, for what you've done, because it really is something. I'm up in Derbyshire, uh, and your campaign is something that's reached right across the nation, and uh, I take my hat off to you, and I know there's people right up and down the country who are saying good on you and, and uh, fire to your elbow for what you've done. So thank you so much, Joe. Um, at this time in the cycle, it's not unusual for us politicians to be responding to demands from one group or another. And so it's always uh, with certain trepidation that you come along to, to speak at the launch of, of one manifesto or another. Um, but I'm delighted to say that I believe Labour's response will tick the boxes on all five of the really important demands made in this manifesto. Uh, and over these next few minutes, I'd like to sort of explain uh, how. When Surfers Against Sewage were first launched, they might well have hoped that by 2024, their work would largely be done. Uh, and, and actually, the fact that there is more salience on this issue now than at any point in my 20 plus years in, in the uh, political world, I think says a lot. And you said yourself, uh, Giles, that you speak not just for surfers, but for swimmers. You are ult the ultimate floating boaters, you might say. <laughs> but, you, but it's right to say that this is something not just people who surf or swim uh, feel strongly about. This is genuinely an issue that affects all of us. Uh, and I make no apology for the fact that, uh, as a party, Labour have been tough on, on water companies on this issue. It is not right that a water company that is failing in its environmental duties would simultaneously be rewarding their executives for, exec for, for excellent performance. And I think last week's Rivers Trust report laid bare the scale of this crisis, with not a single waterway in England listed as being in good overall health. I feel that the sewage crisis is symptomatic to many people of the sense that our country is breaking down in the key things, the key foundations uh, that people ought to be able to rely on. And the pictures we've all seen of sewage swelling down our rivers, into our lakes and onto our beaches disgusts us all. Now the government has cut back on enforcement and monitoring of the water companies and I feel they are now failing to prosecute them under the existing legislation, as you see, when they are bl blatantly breaking the law with illegal sewage dumps. The failure to prevent illegal sewage leaks has led to a drastic, drastic increase in illegal discharges, and it's not clear how the government's new demand for off what to be focused on growth will correspond with the need for improved standards. Under Labour, we say that the polluter and not the public should pay for pollution. We'll expand off what's powers to ban the payment of bonuses to water bosses who breach those environmental commitments. And we'll also improve monitoring by making monitoring of every water outlet compulsory and improve the fines regime. Under our new plans, off what would have been able to block six out of nine water boss company bonuses last year due to high levels of pollutions in our rivers, lakes and seas. My boss, the Shadow Secretary of State, Steve Reid, brought a motion to the House of Commons last December. Motion's the right word to use in this phrase, but in this context, we brought a proposition to the House of Commons uh, last year um, to implement this ban on uh, water company bonuses. And we had a long expo exposition from the Minister at the time on why it was a bad idea. Uh, I'm very pleased to see two months later that the government have now said they themselves uh, are consulting 
uh, on introducing something along those lines. But ultimately, we'll get to the end of the 14 years of this government without that ban being in place, and so it will fall to the new government to take the tough action required. Fines and penalties for breaching regulations are too easily built into the operating costs of water companies, and they don't reflect the environmental damage caused by repeated sewage pollution, which is why the regulators themselves have called for greater powers. This, coupled with weak enforcement from regulators, means there isn't enough of an effective driver to change behaviour. Monitoring and data collection will be overseen by the regulator rather than the current regime of self-reporting. And the Environment Agency estimate that water companies are only reporting 77% of events, which highlights the way the current system is open to abuse. Worse still was the evidence that water companies sometimes downgrade the severity of events when they do their own reporting. We know, of course, that tougher regulation is only part of the answer to the question of resolving this crisis. A future Labour government will work to tackle the cause of sewage leaks at the source. We want to encourage solutions that look to nature first and integrate co choices right across a catchment. Whether it be looking after the agricultural land next to our rivers or taking a strategic approach to wetlands, I look forward to promoting ambitious and progressive interventions that protect our waterways and boost nature. In closing, I believe that Labour's approach will answer the five date demands laid out by Surface Against Sewage and will bring the curtain down on a period of failure and allow Britons once again to take pride in the recovery of our waterways as the founders of Surface Against Sewage would have envisaged when they started that campaigning all those years ago. Thank you very much.